Welcome back to the WP Minute. If you are just listening to this podcast, then you are listening to it in your podcast player on the WP Minute feed. You might be saying, where has this feed been? It's been quite some time since I've published something on the five-minute take of the WP Minute. I wanted to let you know that most of the interviews, actually not most, all of the interviews have been appearing on the WP Minute Plus channel. So make sure you go and subscribe to that. Eventually, I probably will set up a redirect from this particular feed that you're listening to it on to go to the WP Minute Plus, but I'm just kind of reserving for now that you go over to the WP Minute Plus and subscribe to that in your podcast player, because that's where you're going to get all of the uh, interviews that I've been doing and will be doing in the future for WordPress. So if you've been living under a rock, there's been a lot of stuff happening in the WordPress news cycle since uh, WordCamp US last week. And it's, you know, a bit of a time to maybe chime in individually, personally. I've been talking to a lot of folks on the live streams, on Twitter, in the WP Minute Slack channel, of course. If you're not a member there, check that out. The WPMinute.com slash support. You can join for as little as five bucks. You know, a lot of folks have been saying, hey, can't wait for your in-depth analysis or what are your feelings on this stuff and where do you see WordPress going, leadership, et cetera, et cetera. One, I, I would say we're still far too early to understand like where this is going. You know, it, you can follow along all of the updates that we've been tracking at the WP Minute in a blog post, Automatic versus WP Engine. We've been just chronologically archiving the, the events as they as they take place. We're not, you know, we don't have any inside scoops. We don't have any folks on either team giving us information. We're just waiting for it to show up on Twitter or get reported from other outlets and just keep a, a journal of all of this stuff to maybe look back on it one day. Earlier in the week or last week at this point, I had a small panel on the WP Minute live stream, Brian Cords, Courtney Robertson, and we were chatting about you know, what was happening. And that was very early back then. And Matt joined for five minutes and sort of weighed in on with his opinion. And that actual live stream was, or the the tweet that I put out, which was the five or six minute clip of Matt coming into the live stream. I had posted on the WP Minute Twitter account. And that actual tweet or X post was cited in the WP Engine official lawsuit <laughs> complaint letter to Automatic, along with the two other you know, major streamers that Matt appeared on for um, quite some time. And that was slightly eye-opening that, well, one, it was kind of nice to see <laughs> we, we actually got some coverage for the work that we did, when largely there's been an interesting take on WordPress news over these last few weeks. So that was interesting. But it also started to really, you know, buzz the tower of what are we doing here? <laughs> like this is, this has gone far beyond something that I thought was a, you know, open source debate, you know, to put it into perspective, like my thoughts on all of this stuff was I've always covered WordPress news from the perspective of what I call the blue collar digital worker inside of, of WordPress, you know, the person who is just trying to do good work with WordPress and be a good WordPress citizen, whatever that means to that person, and, and, and just have a platform that maybe represents that, that individual. So it's either freelancer, designer, developer, boutique agency, small product maker, somebody just interested in what's happening with WordPress and WordPress is maybe part of their toolkit of solving client needs or something like that. And that's that's the perspective I've always had when criticizing WordPress, when analyzing WordPress, when criticizing the top brass of WordPress. And th this has been something that is super unique, right? Obviously, right? It's an understatement of the, of the year right there. And in the last, you know, 15, 20 years of us being here, this is the most crazy things have ever gotten. And by crazy, I mean damaging, right? Things that this is something that is that can truly damage, if not has already damaged 
the community and those peering into the community. Earlier in the year, I made a, a sort of pact. I think I published it on the WP Minute or I talked about it on, on the podcast where I only wanted to really create content that was enabling WordPress to thrive. And this was based off of, you know, a talk that Josepha Hayden Champossi gave in 20, at the end of 2023, going into 2024 about sort of maybe WordPress is hitting this plateau and it's, and in order for WordPress to continue to thrive, it's, it's going to need more human representation, right? So not another feature or an enhancement, but people need to lift up WordPress, the software, the community, the adoption, the advocacy for it. And well, I was, I was hundred percent behind that. I mean, I'm still hundred percent behind that, but it was at that turning point of, of having attempted to do like hard critical WordPress community news for so long. And let's face it to be sort of like, I wouldn't say ignored, but it, it, it was always largely just looked at like content that was either, Oh, the, the, you know, it's just drama, right? When a lot of the debates we've been having for many years have been true, like moments in time that we, we need to have this discourse about whatever the topic was, but so many people, maybe up until this point or con certainly continue past this point, have always looked at WordPress news as just drama, as things that were, were, were just insulary to, to WordPress and didn't really make a difference to the, to the greater open web or even development, right? You know, it's, it's not an area that I claim to be an expert in, but a lot of folks are kind of always looking down at WordPress and, you know, this is, you know, this is not the coding environment you should be in. You should be using Next.js. You should be using all these other things. And WordPress sort of, you know, always pushed to the side, which I always found laughable having seen WordPress grow so large uh, and to be at this like adoption level that it's at for it to be like totally ignored is, is kind of weird to me. But anyway, like when we look, when I look at like creating this content and, and seeing how people were either just dismissing it because it was drama air quotes, or it's such a small audience from a business perspective. Like a lot of people don't really care about what's happening until you get to this, this massive WordPress versus WP engine thing. So I made this sort of pact to say, you know what, I'm not going to really get steeped into this, into this content that can either be dismissed or is just not for people, right? The, the whole like creating content, WordPress new stuff. I was sort of tired of it. Um, am tired of it, especially after these last couple of weeks. So I made a pact to only create content that I helped that I thought was helping people, right? Either people in the community or users on board to WordPress, right? Do a lot of education on the WP minute, YouTube channel, how to use Gutenberg, how to use 2024, now heading into 2025. Really want to focus uh, my efforts in, into those areas. One, because it's a lot more gratifying and uh, it's where the money is, <laughs> right? Like there's no way about it. Like the bigger audience is for people who are uh, trying to learn WordPress and use WordPress in their daily, daily lives and not so concerned about like what Mullenweg is doing or, you know, cr you know, critically breaking down what Josepha says about the project and, you know, the ins and outs of, of how this thing is built. And then you get to a week like the last two weeks that, that we've had and, it just throws like that mental curveball at you where it's like, okay, this is, this is very important, but also it's something that is, it's, it's difficult to cover in, in, for many reasons. One, because, you know, when, when you start getting so close to this legal, all this legal stuff that's happening, you're like, wait a minute, like, this is just we're just a little blog here. <laughs> like I don't, you know, there's no way I, I can be intertwined in a WP engine and automatic lawsuit. I mean, I'm not worried about it. We're not putting out anything that is, you know, we're not doing any opinion pieces on this. We're just having these open discussions, I'm not leaking anything that we don't know. It's why I said I only pulled information from what's publicly available and that we can at least vet from, you know, the two brands, automatic and WP engine. And it's just like, man, we're just not, we're, we don't, 
we're not there, <laughs> right? We're not this mega media machine. Uh, we're not part of some conglomerate uh, that has, you know, lawyers, lawyers, legal counsel, and 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 money to back any of this uh, up in, in in the event of like a legal catastrophe. And, and that's always been my case with with WordPress news and media. I won't go too deep into it, but that's something that has always been challenging in this space. A lot of people have always said, oh, well, this WordPress new stuff is important. Like you should be covering all this stuff. You should be attacking and going after and doing like this deep research into like the ongoings of automatic, you know, well before stuff like this. And it's like, well, you know, if, how, how, how can I do that when, when nobody invests heavily into, uh, WordPress media, <laughs> right? It's not like our sponsors, as lovely as they are, you know, are giving us a war chest of money in order to, you know, hedge these, you know, hedge these risks of, of really doing some like deep dive, you know, journalism on what's happening. And second to that is it's a super small audience. So it, it's just like a perfect storm of like, oh yeah, this is like important stuff. At the same time, people are people don't pay attention to it because they do dismiss it or they do get tired of it and they just want WordPress to do the thing for them, which is WordPress. But so let's cycle back to what's happening right now. And I think one of the biggest things for me anyway is I really wanted to keep a broad perspective, a balanced perspective in this and for the the last few podcast episodes that I've I've done about uh the topic it has been with like an open mind where I was looking at I looked at it and I said well, is WordPress at this point that we've never been at before is like is that what's happening here like we were really testing the boundaries of commercial WordPress versus open source WordPress, Matt as a leader, how far can a large entity like WP Engine go before we're like, hey, can you give back a little bit more than you do in, in time and hours because we do want WordPress to you know, thrive and survive and, and, and yeah, and get more cool features, but we need more manpower and this is open source at the end of the day. So I'm looking at it from that lens you know, up until this point and I'm trying to understand if this is where we're at, like this is just a new crossroads that WordPress is at. Never been here before, never been explored. Let's see what happens. But the more time marches on and the more stuff I see come out, uh, I feel like it's just we're in the mi middle of something that no one on the open source community side has control over. Like we thought we had control over like WordPress and the direction of WordPress and, and that was a big no, and, which is something I felt for a long time, but something that I feel like gets a lot of people into air quotes trouble in the space, at least like thinking about WordPress. Like you think you own it, you think you have the, the control over the direction and the feedback and you get like 2% of it <laughs> and 98% of it is really directed by Matt. So it, I thought we were just at this, like this critical moment in the history of open source WordPress, but really now feeling like it's, we're just kind of just getting taken advantage of possibly by both parties because we don't have a say in it. And it's, if they don't reach an agreement, then I assume it's just going to get, continue to get uglier and uglier as time marches on. And really that's all it feels like to me right now is, is just that, a legal, a legal match that none of us have a say in, but ultimately it hurts us maybe more than it hurts their brands. I mean, they're both probably going to take a hit if they haven't already. You see some things come out on Twitter about people leaving and I, I can't confirm any of that. And I don't have the desire to confirm it because what am I going to do with this content that doesn't help WordPress thrive, right? And I'm trying to look at it from that lens. I want to inform people and be there for people, but I certainly don't want to make a mistake and also at the same time, like not be burdened with that kind of, that kind of weight in this open source journalism place <laughs> that I've found myself in the last 
uh, couple of years, which I totally realize I ask for, but <laughs> it's also, you know, this is something that is, you know, quite substantial and unprecedented from what we've seen up until this point. So I feel like it's been much more of, yeah, we're just getting taken advantage of. And it's not this fight for open source. It's not this fight at the crossroads of like where open source WordPress has been pushed to more than it has been like manipulated scenario. You know, and I know there are people out there that it's easy for them to say, well, we've been saying that about, you know, Matt for a long time. But I can still hold two thoughts to be true is I don't know where we where WordPress would have been without his push for open source WordPress up until this point. I don't know if it's any better after. And make no mistake, like I don't think it's going to change. And even if it did, like what do we get from that? We get a board of directors maybe you know, unless Matt has some kind of epiphany or changes how he wants to do it, you know, this is, uh, this is still largely his, his playground has been always. And I have challenged him in a lot of areas, again, representing the, the blue collar digital worker, but I have no intent to really challenge this because one is way above, above my pay grade. And two, I think it's going to get manipulated from, from both sides and really just need to let this thing play out largely. So that's all I have to say <laughs> about that and you know where where I'm at right now. I, I don't think that uh, I, I was hopeful we, we might have seen something by the end of the week, whether that's a, an agreement from WP Engine to pay the licensing fee. And, th- and this is what I mean about this stuff is it's all backroom dealings right now. I'm really starting to feel like both sides are just pushing to negotiate and I don't think either party wants to continue on a a legal war, which might last for years for this kind of thing. And I think there will be some kind of agreement that's hit, but, but that also means like all of this emotional tug of war that both parties seemingly put us through, it just sucks (laughs) for everybody. And uh, yeah, emotionally just drained from it. Like, like I'm sure a lot of people are, and I want to get back to the work of like, is this a salvageable experience anymore? That of like the community, like what happens now with like, I think WordPress, the tech and the software will continue, but how do you repair like this this damage on the community when it was already or it already took a hit from COVID and economy and you know events, local events, and you know really try to you know get those things moving again and you know the constant stress of like hey I'm a I'm a WordPress developer we're using WordPress and like the whole technical tech tech world going I can't believe you still use that thing like there's so much weight on top of a, a community member. And that feeling of how do you give back to this thing? How do we repair from this moment? Moments it's still going. It's, there's not even a finale yet. Not at at least of three o'clock on October third, three three p.m. Eastern on October third. So probably not the most uplifting podcast that you've <laughs> you've listened to or watched. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with highlighting this content. Like I said, I'll, I'll continue to track it from a timeline perspective on the WP Minute website, you know, but short of any kind of, you know, dust settling or some kind of milestone being hit, I don't know if I'm going to be talking about it all too much and really just focusing on continuing with the software and the education and some other good stuff, I hope, coming out of WordPress. So there it is. Uh, much longer WP Minute today. Just wanted to let you know, again, just to reiterate, WP Minute Plus is the feed where I do all of the interviews. Sometimes they're on the, the YouTube channel live streamed as well. There's two YouTube channels. There's at WP Minute and at WP Minute Podcasts, where this podcast will be and where some of the um, live streams go. Check those out. 
if you want to stay subscribed. Search for WP Minute Plus in your favorite podcast app. It'll also be linked in the show notes, right at the top of the show notes of this episode. Uh, So you can just click that and subscribe to it in your favorite podcast app. We'll see you and I'll talk to you in the next episode.